I've just bought an ice cream company, the original Rossi Ice Cream Company. It's a 95 year old brand and if you live in the southeast of the United Kingdom, you'll definitely know it. I'm going to take it to the next level and my team are going to help me. And in this video, I'm going to give you all the juicy numbers, exactly what we're going to do with the business and crucially how I structured the deal. Let's get into it. So this is it gang. This is one of the most exciting things I've ever done as a business owner. It's the original Rossi Ice Cream Company, a 90 year old business. In this video, I want to tell you how I structured the deal, why I've done the deal and crucially, I've think about the last year, we all know what's happened. Most of my businesses were stopped trading. One of the things that I didn't know a lot of people did was eat. And I had some problems sourcing ice cream for our brand new farm shop that we opened. And I wanted to stop Rossi ice cream in our farm shop and they stopped manufacturing. And I was like, why? Because everyone's eating more than ever. The supermarkets are busier than ever. And so that was where the start of this opportunity came. So it's another opportunity that's happened out of the P word, out of the C word. So well, come on, let's get into it. Let me tell you how I done it, why I done it, how much money I hope that it's going to make and give you all the juicy details because that's why you're watching. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and give us a big fat like because I like Rossi ice cream and I'd like you to like my YouTube channel because that helps the algorithm and we get to show more people great stuff about helping them grow their business. Let's get into it. So here's what I think you want to know about this deal. And I want to give you all the details to help you grow your business to be a fantastic business grower. That's what we do here on this YouTube channel. But if there is something that I've missed out as I'm going through this video that you want to know, hit it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it as the video goes out. I'm going to tell you how I found the deal because I think a lot of you wonder, how do people find businesses to buy? Next, I think you want to know how I structured the deal. How did I raise the finance to buy a 95 year old ice cream company? And I'm going to tell you a bit more about the business because this was actually really difficult to do. So I'll go through that. And crucially, why? Why have I done this? Why do I see this as a good business decision? Let's get into it. Let's go into how I found the deal first of all. So Rossi Ice Cream was one of our suppliers. I told you at the beginning of this video that I couldn't actually buy the bleeding ice cream to sell in my own farm shop. I've got quite a good relationship with lots of our suppliers and I'm always on the lookout. If I'm spending a lot of money with a particular supplier, I'm always thinking about arbitrage and leverage. If I can buy that business, could I actually grow it because of my network and thus reduce the cost I'm buying for products, increasing the profitability over my businesses and having control. Rossi the ice cream, I'd had the idea of making ice cream on Marsh Farm for quite a while, but I always put that to the back of my mind because I thought, God, it's going to be really difficult to start that. But one day I should think about buying an ice cream company and I'd already thought about the Rossi Ice Cream Company seven years ago, but I just wasn't in a place to do it. So that was already in my mind. So I rang them at the beginning of what's happened over the last year and a half, tried to buy it from them, and I kept on ringing them and said, can we please buy this from you? Can we please buy our ice cream? And I sort of said in jest, Look, if you can't make the ice cream, why don't you just let me buy the ice cream company off of you? And they said, that's not such a bad idea. And that was the start of how this happened. It was a conversation. It was being a bit brash and it was trying to get people in the mindset and planting seeds, but in a jokey way. And they said, yes. So that's how that happened. Why did I do it? Because I saw a chance of leverage. We already, as a business, spend quarter of a million pounds a year with Wool's ice cream, supplying all of our venues with ice cream and lollies and magnums and Cornettos and all of that stuff. So I knew we was buying a lot of ice cream. I also saw huge opportunities for me to get it into other venues and then use the brand to do other things with, which I'm going to come up with and tell you in a minute. Crucially, how I got the deal over the line was because I was being nice. I wanted to be respectful of the business that they owned and I wanted to show them that we was going to be really good with that business because I think when people own businesses, the people they pass it on to, it's not always just about the amount of money they get for a business. They want to know that someone's going to look after their customers that they could have had for generations or decades. And so I wanted to prove that we're nice people and that helped me grease the wheels of doing the business and using my network. That's really helped it. It was really weird. You know, when the stars align in life, my old bank manager from Barclays Bank that retired was the bank manager for Rossi Ice Cream. He used to be my bank manager. He does some non-exec work for this business. So then when I approached them, we had a mutual contact that we both trusted. And I think that gave them confidence in certainly the way that I wanted to structure the deal, which I'm going to explain to you in just a moment. So having a really good network, making sure you're building a network, relationship with suppliers, seeing opportunities and being nice really is how I got this deal over the line. And one other final point, don't forget, 
I asked the question. I actually asked the question. I just think most people won't ask the question. I did. I asked the question. They said yes. We made the deal happen. Let's find out how I structured the deal. <coughs> oh dear. Oh, just uh, have some water from my Entrepreneurs University. Mm mug little little plug there really isn't it because this is where entrepreneurs go to find out how i do this stuff where i actually teach this stuff and you can try it free for 14 days at jamessinclair.net how i find deals how i structure deals and going into even more detail than i'm doing in this video go on give it a try 14 day free trial at jamessinclair.net okay gang let's talk about deal structure here after the cheeky little plug it was a loss making business massive loss but it had had historical losses for the last say 10 years but I knew it had huge potential because it was a brand that families love and my business one of our key targets for our business is building brands that families love if you look at Twizzletop's day nurseries our day nursery business Marsh Farm Animal Revenge Park Party Man World Lee Valley Teddy Tastic they're all brands that families love Rossi is a multi-generational family brand that everyone loves my granddad loved it my dad loves it my grandparents before my grandparents they loved it you just it's real power. And when I was telling my family that I'd bought this business, first of all, they thought I'd bought some ice cream. So I said, I bought Rossi on Thursday. And they said, oh, we love Rossi. It's just the best ice cream. I know that's why I bought it. Then what do you mean? I said, I've bought the company. And they know what I do, but they it took me ages to try and get over. We've actually bought this 90-year-old business that we are going to protect and look after. So like, that, that huge potential thing had a huge role to play, but it was loss making. Um, not huge loss, it's say 50,000 pound loss per year. So how did I do it? That makes it unbankable. Really hard to borrow money from a bank to buy a business when you've got a loss making historic business, even with huge potential. And the bank know it's got huge potential, but they never got it over the line. You know, it's really hard work sometimes being in business. And if you lose the three E's, energy, effort and enthusiasm, whilst I think they had that stuff, the predecessors, not as much energy, effort and enthusiasm as I put into things because I'm a bit younger and I just want to go for things. and I want to take more risks and I find that some people are more risk adverse than I am, but I know I've done this stuff before, so I can just go for it faster. What I did is I said to the owners, I said, look, it's gonna be really hard for me to bank this. The amount of money that you want is much higher than any bank's gonna lend me to do it. So I'm gonna have to do this in my own way. I'll give you a deposit and pay for you over the business over four years using a structure we call vendor finance. And that's how I did it. I got it over the line and what I did was then work to make connections with people four weeks before we bought it to get more customers. So the business, even with this huge thing, circa 1 million of turnover, we're gonna get it to 3 million of turnover within 24 months. I think we can double the revenue in the first 12 months. We did this with other businesses and I think we can absolutely do it with that business. We're gonna put sales in and then put the operations as quick as the sales come in. So we're gonna make sure cash flow is coming into the business as fast as we can. Now, there were business problems with this business, stock controls. You've gotta make sure you've got enough stock to make the ice cream, but this is a a rare business where people want to buy from you and you just got to catch up and make the stock. So we're looking at seven day a week manufacturing, 24 hour manufacturing with double shifts. We need more vans, more freezer storage because we're already getting a ton more customers into the business. So that's roughly how I structured the deal. Next, you're gonna ask this question, well, why, James? Why have you bought a loss-making ice cream company? You keep telling me this brand that everyone knows. Well, there's another good reason for it. it. Ice cream is a very good margin business. We're a wholesale business, but there's also opportunity to open parlors, and there are Rossi ice cream parlors that we supply, and one day they wanna sell, we can buy them back and own all the, pro uh, own all the parlors again. But margin had a big part to play here, because I know that the fundamentals of the business is if you sell enough ice cream the margins the gross profits are there to build a profitable business and that's what we needed to do we had this brilliant brand we have leverage we have a brilliant marketing team we know how to get customers we know how to get keep customers we are passionate about brilliant deliverables and great customer service and looking after family brands we spend 250 grand on ice cream per year that can go straight into Rossi away from walls Rossi parlors and cafes we can open more of those and also huge room for improvement in the business. And this is when I look at businesses and I bought lots of loss making businesses. If I can see a brand, I can see a customer database and I can see that we can use our existing business just to make huge mass improvements, then everything looks really good in very quick succession. There's, we can like at speed make more stuff happen. Now also, here's the other things. These are our big next steps to improve this business. We're gonna make the best product. We make really good sorbets. We've got a great vanilla, but we're not 
making white chocolate. We're not making pistachio. We're not making these artisan flavors and ingredients that people want now. That hasn't been done. We want to supply more of these artisan, brilliant, independent restaurants. The buy all the sorbets from us, they buy our vanilla, but we haven't got enough of the interesting flavors. We can do that at scale. And from my entertainment days, I used to work in all those restaurants around Essex, London, and Hertfordshire. I rang them all up. They want to buy from me because I've got that great network and great relationship. That's bringing in business really quickly. A single restaurant could spend 15,000 pounds a year with us on ice cream. Once we've got a hundred of those, we're making some serious, decent bottom line. Then our vehicles are delivering into more areas. You go and find other customers. And what I love about this business, we're getting and keeping customers. That's what we're doing. I'm focusing on my next steps, making the best product, getting and keeping customers, but then increasing average customer value, average transactional value, and average lifetime value. See, when you look at this as a business, this is what I love about this, the three levers that make a great business. If your average customer value for us is about 200 pounds per order, and they're transacting with you five times a month, 12,000 pounds a year, average order value, this is great. And the lifetime value, as long as you look after them, as long as that ice cream parlor stays open, that restaurant stays open, you can have a 20 year average lifetime value as a customer. We supply Morrison's, we supply Asda, they keep on buying the same pallets and the same orders on a weekly, weekly, monthly basis. This, to me, is when it gets really exciting. If you look at some of my other businesses, like my play center model, if I just write over and tell you the differences, Average customer value, to, sorry that pen's gone. Average customer value of 10 pounds. Transactional value is twice a year. So what's that 10 times? That? So they're worth 20 pounds as a customer to us. Lifetime value is three or four years because the children grow up. So each customer's probably only worth maximum 100 pounds. When you see here, the lifetime value of a customer could be quarter of a million pounds. That's why I see this as a huge, massive opportunity to take this business to the next level and you're gonna start seeing Rossi all over the country. That's my big aim, because we're in the business of building brands that families love. Hope you enjoyed this video. You're gonna be seeing more of the Rossi journey on the YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments below if I've missed anything to help grow your business. Don't forget to give my Entrepreneurs University a try. Free 14-day trial at jamessinclair.net and check out the James Sinclair podcast, where I coach business owners on how to grow their business. You can apply to be on it for free, again, at the same website, jamessinclair.net. All roads lead to James Sinclair don't net, don't they? See you in the next video. Subscribe to the channel by clicking here. And YouTube is telling me that you're going to love this video. So click it right here. See ya.